and action. Guten Tag, meine Damen und Herren, und willkommen bei meinem Show. What? <laughs> My show. What? <laughs> I have a special guest here this evening, okay. who I'm sure you will recognize as soon as the camera goes on to him. And I'm just so excited that he's here to give us, give us an insight into his feelings, his knowledge, his just general demeanor. Mm -hmm. he's, he's an incredible person. He is someone I've known for, I don't know how many years, <laughs> but far too many, 35 years. And I hope you're going to enjoy this evening. So who am I? I would like to welcome <laughs> Rudy Dolezal. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Also, we have done it differently, my dear friends. We have done it. We have said it differently, but you took over my show. What's okay? No, whose show? Yeah, it, it was my show yeah, until I invited you. Was yeah, it, it yeah, was until I invited you, and now you're sitting in my chair. I'm sitting here. Yeah. Okay. Next thing is I'm probably out of the door. And uh, no, no. Well, in an hour we'll talk a bit. <laughs> okay. Then, then you throw me out. You know. Okay, yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but uh, actually, uh, we have us already thought we're going to do it differently. Und ähm, sozusagen, äh, ich werde vielleicht ein bisschen was gefragt und dann werden wir sehen, ob wir zurückschauen. We said, maybe it's funny to do it the other way around. Why And um, um, so, I'm yours, darling. Where do we start? But first 35... of all, I have to say, excuse yes. me, that this is obviously a, a, a program, das ist ein Programm, das ob wir auf Englisch machen und Sie haben deutsche Untertitel. Uh, falls Sie es noch nicht gewusst haben, uh, das heißt ohne Markup mit tolle Zahl, aber jetzt viel Spaß, bitte. But you don't need the German subtitles for my introduction. No, because you surprised me. See, <laughs> see, you see, this is it. I do things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, but the thing is, you know, on the red couch, as you know, I say always with for my guests, it's not. A, you have to tell the truth. Yes. And you said all the time, uh, you know, I don't speak German. I don't speak German. I don't speak German. But I knew that you understand at least 80%, right? <laughs> that well, you say it, it, that so that you check out what is she saying about me, yeah? Mm -hmm, of course. But darling, you don't. On. No, I don't. I don't understand anything. Uh -huh, I, I'm uh -huh, happy that uh -huh. if I sometimes understand myself. Okay, we've known each other 35 years. Mm -hmm. Can, do you remember the first day? I actually... Um, well, I would lie, which I'm no. not allowed to. Hang on. If I say I remember the first day, but I can uh, go back in my memory uh, bank uh, up here, um, which is what I used to write my book, uh, 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 which is quite good, actually. Uh, I'm, surprisingly. I'm lucky as well. Surprising, been... yeah, surprisingly. Um, you, I don't think you were present around One Vision in Munich. I, because I do no, remember, no. I always have pictures in my head. Yeah? Yeah. I do remember Jim Hutton. Yes. Uh, he was there. He's actually filmed in the, in the control room once by me, so it's easy that I remember him. But, so that was my first video. But the second yeah. one, which was Friends Will Be... No! Hang on! It was one. Vision. Yes! 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 Uh, it was, remember... One Vision was in the mu Music Line studio in yes. Munich. And yes. we are revealing now a, uh, a, a secret which actually was meant to only be revealed in my book, uh, My Friend Freddy. But here it is. Mwah! Für euch, liebe Schatzis. Uh, I was filming this in, in, the, in, the, in the Music Line studio in, in studios, Munich. Yes. Uh, which is the most boring uh, 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 situation you can get as a music video director. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I get my more probably only music video to direct for Queen, and what is my chance in, in a sound studio? studio. Yeah. Okay, with microphones and ugly... Cables. Uh, yeah, exactly. And, yeah. So, no, this is not ugly, this is great. Uh, thank you, Sini. Um, um, he d d designed this. And, um, no, anyway, so... I filmed there, da da da. Uh, can, we can talk about that another time. But when I got the final track of One Vision, there was a choir. Oh, 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 One Vision, which they never sang in, in Munich. So I called Jim Beach, 
the manager and said, Jim, yeah. what, are, what am I supposed to show with this choir? Oh, yeah, they did it while they were mixing. It was a spontaneous idea. I said, oh, great. And what am I going to do? This is a video yeah. which just shows the band playing in the studio. There is no action. There is no animation. There is no photographs, nothing. So he said, oh, you're right. I said, we have to do a reshoot. So, but the problem is there's only one day when um, all four of them are available, and it must be London. Because then they are, this, this one is on holiday, and da-da-da, mm. and solo project, <laughs> yeah, what yeah, have yeah. you. So I said, yeah, but uh, this, this, the Musicland studio is in Munich. Yeah? So long story short, I went there with my art director, and we were photographing each corner uh, with Mac, the producer who helped yeah. us, obviously, uh, of the Musicland studio, and I rebuilt a corner of the Munich Music Lab studio yes. in the London film studio. And the four of them put them there behind the microphone. Mm -hmm. Until this day, I think nobody noticed that this one shot is fake. Yeah. There is a microphone, they have a different clothing, okay. yeah, whatever. <laughs> so this was not in the Music Lab studio, it was in London. And then I also Freddie had the idea, or was it the two of us? I don't remember, but let's say it was Freddie because he was always, uh, you know, the master of ceremony in in, in so many ways. Yeah. Uh, that uh, the old picture of Bohemian Rhapsody, yes. to, to dissolve it into a, the, into the four of them today. Uh, so I had yeah. to recreate this four shot. The problem is, if you look at the original shot of Bohemian Rhapsody, R Roger Taylor is like that. <laughs> I don't know why, yeah? So, I obviously, to make a dissolve, and this was, don't forget, this was before morphing and all yeah. those yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, video yeah, yeah, effects yeah. that nowadays everybody has on his... Uh, mobile phone. Uh, exactly, <laughs> on his mobile phone. Um, so, it had to match completely. Yeah. And um, I did that. And after that, and I write about this in my book, Freddie said, well, we can't stop like this on a, on a queen shoot. You're all invited to me at home. And everybody, including the film crew, of course, the band, etc. Yeah. And this is where you come into the picture. Because it was, not, it was long before Garden Lodge. Yeah. And it was the, the, the apartment in slash Stafford flat Terrace. in Stafford Terrace. Stafford Terrace. Yeah. And there you, we must have met. Yeah. So we could even look up the day, but it yeah. was 1985. Yeah. 85, 95, 05, 15, yeah. Yeah. More than 35 years, yes. 37. Ouch. Uh, but um, that means you must have been a, a, a child because you are 40 something yeah, I, now. I, 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 just cr out of crawling. Out of I crawling, think, you know. Yeah. No, but you were actually bringing the drinks and all that. Yeah. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing was that um, all of my crew was, of, of course, very, very tired because mm. they were working since six or something yes. in the morning. Yeah, yeah. And um, for some reason, and I don't know why, Freddie was talking, 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 and he was not tired. Hmm. He was probably the only person that wasn't tired. <laughs> but you know why? Mm. Reserves of energy. No, there was this white powder. Ah, okay. Okay. Mm. This uh -huh. one. They, they call uh -huh. it, yeah, anyway, long, long, long time ago. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. I thought it's a, it's a, it's a painkiller or something, and it takes it through oh, his I nose. I just thought it was dust and yeah, swipe yeah, yeah. it away. Oh, that, that <laughs> you were the one who swiped <laughs> it away. <laughs> where is my, where's my blow gone? Anyway, so thing is that one after the other was falling asleep yeah. or going home. And in the end, and this leads now with all the funny thing to a very, very, uh, <clears throat> special moment in my life, which I actually haven't told so many people, so you're getting this out of me. You're actually quite a good interviewer. <laughs> um, that uh, there was only the two of us. Yes, you, you, want, you want, want me to sign it? Oh, no. yes. There was only the two of us left, and, and he, in my book, I call it Freddy the Philosopher. And he said things that I, as the young, I was hanging on his lips. Some of the stuff I didn't even understand at the time, because he said something like, um, uh, when you go up the ladder of success, 
you must be aware that for every step you go up, you must leave something behind that you love. You cannot go up mm -hmm. all the way to success and take everything with you. Ooh. All your friends, all your things you are yeah. used to, etc. And I said, well, what is he talking about? Yeah, but now but I know. you found, yeah. Well, not me, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I, who, who am I? But I mean, No, yeah. no, no, no. But, but people, you, people it, like Falco, Rock yeah. Amadeus, yeah? Yeah, yeah? They went up the ladder of success and they had to leave behind quite a few things. I yeah. saw it with my own eyes. And he's another friend. If I call Freddie yeah. my friend, yeah, yeah, Falco yeah. was a friend too. Um, and, and then he said things like, um, you know, always go for the impossible. Yeah. And that was him. When did you feel the change between video director and friend? <clears throat> well, you will, I mean, you know that I wrote a book, uh, uh, which is, uh, which yeah. is called My Friend Freddy. Yes. And I know, uh, especially in, here in Austria, uh, uh, a lot of people will say, oh, how arrogant, how can he say, mm. mein Freund Freddy, yeah? Mm. Who, yeah because the I was, only people who could say, have anything to say are the people who were sitting well, there. Well, you could actually say, is it true or not, yeah? yeah. But then, and you might or might not. But the thing is, um, when... Um, it, took, it took a while, and uh, after One Vision, there was, through a coincidence, the second Queen video, Friends Will Be Friends, which I only got because I was at Pembridge Court, at yeah. Pembridge Road, uh, Queen office, yeah. and David Mallet had overbooked himself. <laughs> and my, my dear friend, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and at that time, a very famous music yes. video director still is, um, he had uh, uh, said yeah, he said yes to a Tina Turner video and to the Queen video, and then they happened to be on the same mm -hmm. day. So I heard Jim Beach talking on the phone, saying, how can you do this? And he put down the phone, honestly, this was like it. And said, what are you doing next week to me? I was there actually saying goodbye because I was finishing the paperwork yeah. for One Vision. Yeah, yeah. It was a coincidence. <laughs> and I said, what do you want me to do? And he said, you're going to direct the next Queen video. Friends will be friends here in London. You have one week. And that was the first one in London Whereas Munich was my home turf, yeah. in a way, yeah, yeah, like yeah, Vienna, yeah. Munich, and with my crew. But in London, that was that. And after that, um, I, I found out that he always wanted to have me. Mm. So that was the first step was from a video director, like there were many others. I wouldn't say to that, but together with David Mallet, who still continued yes. doing stuff, yeah, yeah. the two of us more or less did, every, did anything. And I have to mention my partner or my ex-partner in uh, yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're doing most of the work of the videos, including the, 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 the solo videos, because I also did yeah. Living on My Own. And altogether, it was 32. <sighs> Queen-related videos, I, I, I fan... And with the documentaries? No, no, the... no, 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 music uh -huh. videos. Okay. okay, 32 music videos, one song, yeah. one, video, one video, including the Brian May solo, the Roger Taylor solo, the Freddie, Freddie. solo, yeah. and, um, and the Anita Dobson, who was produced by, by, yeah, by, by Brian, Brian, but was like a Queen yeah, yeah, video, because yeah. he played on it and he wrote the song and so on. But then came the time when he said, Coming back to your question after a long introduction, I'm sorry. Um, just call me when you're in London. Or come around. And then he asked me around and we met yeah. so very often. And then I was there and we didn't have a project. And we didn't have uh, uh, anything to, to, to discuss Queen or Freddie Mercury uh, yeah. career related. And there's this famous photograph that you took uh, when... Uh, when I look like I have must have had half a bottle of vodka and I don't know what else, Only. like <laughs> yeah, and uh, and you were you got, went upstairs uh, in Garden Lodge, which which is as 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 people will know uh, uh, yeah. in my book because you were so kind and make a, make a drawing. There is the main living room, but it had a little stair. Yeah, and there was the musicians' gallery. Yes, which is um, like a little balcony. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And on the stairs, you went up and you were making a photograph of what I call the inner circle. Yeah. 
with Brian and Roger, but also uh, a, a trip, the sound trip engineer, yeah. Crystal. Crystal, Crystal yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and we were playing, we were doing what? We were playing Scrabble. Scrabble. Yeah. What and, else? <laughs> and I was sitting next to Freddy and I looked so drunk or out of it. And the funny thing was, remember that one? That um, the funny thing was that uh, that you uh, put um, uh, little, um, how do you say, bubbles that, that, that oh, we yeah, were, the... not that we were saying. Ah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, yeah, what yeah. do you call it in English? Um, so kleine Sprechblasen, yeah? Yeah, um, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, anyway, <laughs> but, 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 so and with me, you put which way to Hollywood? And that was exactly my face, like, I want to be famous. I'm here with rock stars. I'm out of it. I have no idea what I'm fucking doing. Which way to Hollywood? And things like that. Yeah. No, I mean, that was definitely already a time when I considered myself to be a friend. A friend yeah. coming, coming, playing Scrabble with the hardcore people that yeah. that uh, are either for the tours. I mean, also trip. You know, I mean, I don't know how many hundreds of music sh of sh of Queen yes. and and uh, Josie. The thing is, at that even at that point, I was still the youngest of the. The, guys, the, the lodge, group, the group. No, 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 of the group of people. I mean, the uh, youngest in the newest. The newest. Yeah. The newest. I joined in '79. Trip had been there for years before doing the sound. Crystal had been there for years. Ratty was there for years. Ratty, before correct. me. Ra yeah, yeah. You know, um, so of that group, I was the newest. Mm. So, but the thing is, they had this way of making you feel part. Mm. Welcome. You, uh, there was never one minute that I felt that I don't belong here. It's just, I just not. It, it that, just... Is the, that is the thing which is really uh, intriguing me because, as you know, I'm a very shy person. Yeah. I mean, now you're, you're supposed to start laughing, yeah. but yeah, I am yeah, honestly yeah. In, the, in, the, in, in my inner self, mm. like my sons, by the way, not an outgoing person. The outgoing no. way very often it's is to cover up the exactly. shy yeah. or cover up insecurity in the beginning. Yes. And then yeah, it yeah. sort of becomes a habit that you talk, 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 yeah. talk, talk. Yeah. yeah? yeah, yeah. Um, but at the time I felt home and I, I wasn't even, I mean, this included everything like when Freddie was offering a glass like this full of almost full of vodka, I was drinking it yeah. uh, because yeah. it was like, OK, you, you, he's was, doing it, I'm normal. doing it. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, and, you, and you were, uh, which, which is a bad thing, you know, because I did it because m one of the people that I really liked and, 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 and found very, very interesting did things that I said, OK, if he's doing it, I'm doing it. Yeah. 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 Do you have any more questions or should we change over? Um, um, I'm not answering favorite sex position. You must. Red, red couch. No, no, no. I, it doesn't say I have to answer all the questions. Ah, you can okay. ask what you want. If I'm answering a question... No, I just was making When was the last time you dressed up as a woman? I actually never did. <laughs> But you did at the birthday party yes. uh, in Munich. <laughs> uh, which, which birthday for Freddy was it? 39, I believe. 13, not 37? No, I think it was 39. 39 could be. Yeah. No, no, 37 was the interview that I yeah. did. The prostitute yeah, said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't look too bad for 37. <laughs> Remember? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but you weren't there at the interview. That was Paul Pranter no. yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, time, uh, um, which who, who was like a... a he, well, he was the, the personal manager for the band. He was the personal manager and he... But he spent all his time with Freddie, so the band said, well, he's not our personal manager. OK. And that's where then Paul moved over just to look, be out, taking care of Freddie. Yeah, before and he... And then I had to take care of Freddie because Freddie was moving away out of England and Paul had to stay in England, so... Yeah, no, that was at the end. It, the yeah. Paul Pranter chapter ended very ugly because he was yeah. he was selling uh, uh, um, private pictures to a to to, to a tabloid yeah. uh, and yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that. But anyway, that's a different story. But uh, the but there was the birthday party in Munich. Yes. And uh, it was a black and white party. It was, yes. And you came dressed as a woman. Yes, because we were supposed to. Well, I wasn't dressed as a woman. 
But I was you black and white. Huh? You were working. <laughs> <laughs> you could... And so was the photographer. Yeah, he was. And in he a... was a woman. He yes. was dressed in. in... Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Freddie didn't. Maybe that was. Well, that was. That was only my third video. Okay. Or even second. After one oh, and so Freddie wouldn't want to ask you, oh, please dress up as a woman, would I, he? Well, maybe... <laughs> I mean, Freddie knew very qu uh, very quickly that I am not gay. Oh, yeah, that but... I'm a heterosexual man. But the man. thing is, that didn't... That would never have bothered him. Yeah. Sex and sexuality was not something that bothered him at all. Mm. You but know, see... because he hated the idea of, bo of boxes. Mm. You know, of putting people into a box. And if you talk about their sexuality, they're in this box. Mm -hmm. And they're in this box. Mm -hmm. And that he hated. People are people. Mm. Absolutely. But now you're more answering. This is why I'm suggesting... All right, uh, let's uh, move. Uh, but you, you, did a, you did a great job, uh, of my friend. So uh, we, are, we are back to normal. <laughs> mm. OK. If there is anything like normal... In, my, in, any of in, your in, in any of my shows. Yeah. <laughs> also, meine Damen und Herren, ich, ich begrüße Sie <laughs> <laughs> zu einer ganz anderen Sendung ohne Malkorb mit Tollezahl. Sie wissen, das ist die Sendung, wo äh, die Leute auf einer roten Couch sitzen, die Wahrheit sprechen müssen und wo ich interessante Gäste habe. Und heute ist es, wie schon er sich selber introduced hat, mein my dear friend Peter Freestone. Uh, zwölf Jahre persönlicher Assistent von Freddie Mercury uh, an seiner Seite bis zum Schluss. Um, und, uh, mein Gott, uh, I remember in one of my uh, documentaries, you were explaining that the last thing you could do for Freddie after he passed. Mm -hmm. Do you want to repeat? Um, yeah, I mean, my job basically was to make Freddie's life easy. You know, I took care of the day-to-day -day things, the answer the telephone, answer the door, do the shopping, cooking, cleaning, whatever the tea and the all of us normal people do, <laughs> so that he had the chance to think about music. And, you know, because that was his work. Um, but also, what I had to do was make sure that when he left the house, that he looked presentable, you know, that the shirts were ironed, that he, all the clothes he wanted were at, you know, at the fingertips. Um, and on the 24th of November, 1991. Which was the day? Um, which was which day? Which was Freddie's last day on this earth, it fell to me to, I had to make the funeral arrangements, I had to do everything. And for me, it was still, it was the last thing that I really could do for him to make sure that when he left this earth, he, he you know, he was presentable. Um, because the thing is, it was a private funeral with 50 close members of his family and about 14, 15 friends. But outside, the world's press was ranked up with TV cameras, normal cameras. Everybody was just there looking, looking, looking. And for me, I just had to make sure that the last view, even though it might only be a wooden box, any time I see that, I know exactly what's inside. I know exactly what he was looking like, I, everything. But for the world, you see a good coffin, a nice coffin, and he's being treated with respect. And that was what was so important. It was the last time that I could take care of him so that he was seen in public and looking good. You also put on his clothes. Yeah, um, we inside the coffin. I mean, on, on, on yeah, um, we oil. we. I mean, literally, we were changing Freddie as he died. And 
I mean, it's not like it's something that's announced, you know. All we noticed was just suddenly he just stopped breathing. So we actually put the clothes onto him, something, things that he liked. He, he loved these particularly, the, there was these red shorts, that satin look, and he had those on. You know, it was things that he felt comfortable in. Because for me, he, <laughs> this is what he was going to wear forever. You know, what I, I know that sounds stupid, but this is what I felt. And he just, the sad thing is because with that whole, at that time, it was classed as an infectious disease. So he had to be put into a black zip bag and that was it, it was never going to be opened again. Mm. So what he was wearing at that point would never change. Um, I surprised myself, I suppose, um, in that I didn't cry at all at the time when he died. Um, I, I can see here in my head, Joe, Finelli and I were upstairs in the bedroom when Freddie was being taken away. And I was just holding Joe's hand and he was just shaking and shaking. And I thought, I have to be strong. Someone has to be strong now. That house, Freddie had insisted from the time we moved in that this was our home and we had to feel this was our home. And right up until those last minutes, it had a warmth. That house, you could feel Freddie's spirit there. But literally within minutes, it had just become bricks and mortar. And he was taken away. And I just had to think, because I knew I'd spoken with Jim Beach already at that point. And he said, look, you've got to do everything. I'm in Los Angeles. I can do nothing. So please, you arrange everything. So then I had to go. We already immediately had one death certificate from Dr. Atkinson. But I also knew if you are cremating someone in the UK, before you can get the death certificate, you have to have two. You know, the, I mean, the registrar certificate, you have to have two doctor's certificate. So we called the um, Graham Moyle, who was actually looking after Freddie for HIV. Um, and he came and did it. And then first thing on the Monday morning, I was at Kensington to Chelsea Registrar Office registering Freddie's death. I mean, there's, there's, it's all around the internet and everything. You can actually see Freddie's death certificate and there's my name, my signature, everything on it. And then everything, I specifically, because people were saying, and they say, oh, it was so lovely. Freddie went back to his Zoroastrian roots and da da da. Freddie never once talked about what he wanted after he died. He wasn't concerned. He wasn't interested. He wasn't going to be here. Why, why would he want to know what's going on? Um, it was me who contacted his parents because the whole world had had Freddie Mercury for... 20 years. He belonged to the whole world. And I just felt that his parents were having to do something that no parent should. And that's burying one of their children. And so I felt it only right that he, was, he departed the way they needed it to happen to make them feel. Freddie's parents 
had to do something that no parent should do, and that's bury a child. Um, I learnt when I was 14 years old, believe it or not, because my father buried Freddie. He was a funeral director. Um, Your father buried Freddie? Yes. I didn't know that. Yes. Um, and it was... I was 14 when I arranged, believe it or not, my first funeral. And something that my father told me that always, always stuck with me. Never use the words, what, how many cars do you want? Um, because nobody wants to do anything with a funeral. Mm. Um, what would you like? No, you don't use those words. It's words like, what, what do you need? What would you require? Mm. Um, and this is why I thought Freddie's parents had to be involved. Mm. They, you know, it was their son. Mm. He, okay, he was my friend. He was a relative to all these other people that were there. But this was their son. And... As I said, it's bad enough that they had to bury their son, but they have to have their own sort of bringing it to a conclusion. And if they can do it in their, the style that they needed, you know, with the Zoroastrian priests, because they were serious Zoroastrians. Freddie, religious-wise, he had his own beliefs. He, ha he knew what he believed in. But I, there was no organized religion that he had anything to do with. And he was not an active Parsi? No, no, no. We no, no, have no, to no. maybe explain to people, especially in, in Austria, uh, that Freddy was, uh, through his parents, born into a religion which is yeah. called Parsi. Parsi. Yeah. So, rest, so astroism. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and this is a religion that you cannot join, you can only be born into, yes. you can leave it, but you yeah. cannot say, I want to be a Parsi. Even to the point that if you marry, you have to marry another Parsi. Mm. Which is very strict and uh, yeah. as far as and I know. And that's the parents, that, that was the parents, that's mm. what they felt. I think also that, uh, that the Parsi religion has a very um, strict views uh, for homosexuality yes. and, and mm. uh, in other words it's... Uh, but you see that's why um, Freddie actually kept his parents very much away from his life. There were, there were definitely two lives. There was the life of Freddie and his family and there was the life of Freddie and the rest of the world. Um, we could also say the real Freddy. Well, both, yeah. of, the, both of them were real. Yeah, really? Both of them were real. Because he was real to his parents. He just couldn't be the Freddy he wanted to be mm. with his parents. Well, that's what because I mean. he didn't want to rub their noses in it. You know, he didn't want to make them have to face the fact that their son was totally against their religion. Because then it would reflect on them as well. Mm. So that's why, you know, people ask, but why did he take Mary everywhere? Did For his parents' sake. She spoke to his parents a lot more than he did. You know, she had much more contact with them. Because they thought that Mary was his girlfriend. Yeah, because she was there at the beginning, you know, and because she stayed even after 74 when they split up, but they still sort of were together as friends. So he, you know, they liked her. So it was a good buffer mm. for Freddie between him, his, his life at home and his family. I know this is now uh, sort of uh, more serious, but I, I never heard you talk about those moments and we did many interviews yeah. together. So this is... Was you see, you're still bringing things out. Yes, and it's things. also something very touchy because I see that it moves you as it moves, of course, on me. But let's go back to this day when he left this earth. Um, 
one thing that I uh, um, realized very soon when it became more and more uh, obvious that he was very, let's say, fragile, yeah. Yeah, and I, of course, days of our lives, the last yes. one, etc., yeah, yeah. was that he didn't want many people to see him like that. He wanted uh, not so much that he was um, so, I don't know, full of himself that he wanted, but I think he didn't want, and please correct me if, the, if you see it wrong, if you see it differently, he didn't want to be a burden to other people. No, of course. That was the reason. He yes. didn't want to be seen as the weak person who is losing his he eyesight. Who absolutely no sympathy from people. He didn't want to walk into a room and people say, oh, come on, sit down, Freddie, you're going to be tired. He never wanted that. He wanted to keep going with his life as long as possible. The reason that he withdrew from people, that he kept pushing friends away, was because he wanted them to remember the happy, smiling, laughing Freddie that they had known for so many years. Um, so many people now say, oh, we knew Freddie Mercury had AIDS. Mm. No, I'm on the red couch. Mm. The only people who knew were the people he told. Mm. OK, a thousand people can guess, mm. but the only people that knew were the ones he told. No, no, it, it, it was the band. Of yeah. course, the house, yeah. which includes you. Yeah, I mean the the four yeah. people that he lived with, uh, his entourage and his lover, and and um, he told me once he he asked the band over and said, "This is the fact. I have this disease, and I never want to talk about it again." Yes, that's that's how he told me. Yeah, in 1987. You know now, and this is it. Yes. I will. N I never want to talk about it again. And the yeah. thing is, I know. I know one of the reasons why he told us in the house, because we were looking after him. And what, what, you know, if we didn't know, and say he cut himself, and we would have to go and clean it up and make everything, we, we have to be aware of what could happen. We were... Because you could be infected yes, with the HIV through virus. The, through yeah. the blood. Yeah. Um, Joe and I were taught how to give him all his um, drugs and things through the Hickman line in his chest because he didn't want nurses around the house to go in and out of the house every day. He didn't want to be in the hospital. He, d he wanted everything at home. So we were taught, and the first thing we were taught is you always have to put on a pair of gloves. Both Joe and I I think it lasted two days with gloves and then we couldn't wear them anymore. There was absolutely no way we could touch Freddie with gloves. It didn't worry me, the, the infection side of it. Mm. I, 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 it didn't really, it really did not worry me. But I could not touch my friend with gloves on. Mm. If I have to touch him, I want to touch him. And that's what, in the end, we, the doctors were so kind to Joe and me because they paid us such a huge compliment because they said people with Hickman lines suffer so much because normally it's infected within three months it has to take out and put another one in. Freddie had his for over a year and there was never once any infection. And that's because of the way Joe and I were dealing with it. Why don't we think for a moment of this man that we are talking? I think about him every day. Different situations. But. You know, when you said the thing with uh, the gloves now, it, you know yeah. what it reminded me of, a, of, um, of, of, of something that I, I experienced. 
Um, when I was over at Garden Lodge as a friend and not as a video director, it was always, and you know that, it was always at the end, although I'm hetero, yeah, it was a kiss left and right yes. to yeah. go. And one of the moments when I was pretty sure, maybe, yes, I know, through Barbara Valentine, I knew that he had AIDS. Mm -hmm. Because she thought, I know. Yeah. And I showed her a video, it was one of the miracle videos, the, the one on the train, I think, in her apartment in Munich. And um, because I was considered in a circle, uh, yeah, uh, she thought, I know it for sure, um, but I didn't, I, I was guessing, mm. but he, I wasn't knowing it for sure at the time. So she, she, in German, we would say, she had sich verplappert, yeah, she had sich yeah. versprochen. She said, that's the thing, you know, that I, it's, not, it's not bad what he does with the, I said, what? And she said, oh, don't you know? I said, no. So I said, now, now you know. You know, no, Barbara. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Long story short, I knew that he had AIDS and there was another garden lodge meeting private. And I think it was just something with the, you know, with the blanket uh, on, on, the, on, the, on the couch watching television, yeah. something mm -hmm. very normal, not spectacular. Sometimes it's so funny, I remember those things more than the spectacular when I filmed in front of a hundred, you know, because those were moments where the real Freddie Mercury yeah. gave himself to, to people like people, me yes. and said, listen, look, this is how I am. If I say this, I have to be careful that we not both no, start no, to no, cry. No, but if, no, if you fucking cry, we cry. But I know. But let Freddy me please you're talking about. Yeah, let me please. And then, I was of course afraid because at the time with AIDS, people said you can get it from the toilet seat. You can get it Touch from a kiss. Glass. You can get yeah. it if you just. So, the, the evening went on, and I'm describing that in my book, and. I said, what am I going to do? Am I going to kiss him when I go now? And I went to the toilet, you know, the downstairs yeah, yeah. toilet. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, that's house better than I, but... And I, and I said, should I take care? Should I tell him that I'm maybe afraid? I didn't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then I went back and the evening was getting over and we were at the door and we kissed. Yeah. You know why? <clears throat> because he would have never kissed me if, he w if there would have been the chance yeah. that he would infect me. Yeah. On the toilet, I was suddenly realizing it's okay when yeah. Freddie does it, because he would never do this to a friend yeah. if it wasn't sure. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, 100%. I know exactly. But this, as I said, Freddie thought more of other people than he did himself. He was very much aware <coughs> of what was going on with him. He and knew the, about the, he knew about the rumors. He knew about, oh, don't touch he this knife and fuck. No, way. but the thing is... Only for the parents, you're right, or for other yes, people, yeah, you know? Because his parents were amongst the last people who he told. But you know, I know the parents' problem, you know, yeah. and I'm not, I'm not in, a, in a strange religion, but I give you, and also what I wanted to say is because I was now crying, which I'm proud of, yeah? Uh, don't give a fuck. Um, Freddie doesn't want us to be sad. No, of course He not. was a man of life. Yeah. Yes, we can touch that, and if it comes out, it comes out, but Freddie would, not, would say, don't, I mean, he would say, drink a glass of champagne, I'm not drinking in the moment, yeah. but he would say, celebrate life. Yeah. yeah, that was what he was about, not that we are sitting here, but it comes, it doesn't, don't you feel it comes and goes sometimes, yeah. and uh, it's very rarely these days, but it comes still, but same to you? The thing is, you, do you want my personal thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> and not specifically Freddy. Um, when anybody close to us dies, we become the most selfish people on earth. True. Because who are you sad for? Mm. You're sad for yourself. True. Because that person you know is gone. How are you going to deal with it on your own? 
that person has to be out of pain. That person doesn't have to feel anything anymore. You should be happy for them. Maybe it's in, he's in a better place. Yes. Probably. I mean, people were complaining because straight after the funeral, there were some of us went straight back to Garden Lodge, Jim Beach organized for champagne to celebrate the life mm. of that man who mm. we just said goodbye to. Because that's what Freddie would have done. Mm. Freddie wasn't a person, you know, mm. he was not a person who was sad. Sad was not part of Freddie's personality. Serious, yes. Concerned, yes. But happy, smiling, not sad mm. and depressed. Mm. Even when he had his diagnosis, he was not depressed because it took away the fact that he would get old. That mm. was the one thing he was scared of in his life. That's true. That's of getting true. old. Mm. And he was diagnosed with AIDS. He knew he would never become old. I mean, this is, this is maybe, and this, uh, I, I mean this in a loving way and not in a cynical way, the way. This is maybe, I mean, look what happened to James Dean. He died very young. I mean, Freddie was not yes. that young. No, no, no. But you never saw James Dean or other, uh, you know, star, even Falco, you know, yeah. uh, Rockman Amadeus. You never saw him losing his hair, being overweight, no. having white gray, being, being getting fat, double chin like me or whatever, you know. So the way you remember those uh, icons yes. is, and in a way, that is that's the same thing with Freddie, which is why he's still apart from the fact that he was the most outstanding person I ever was the, uh, privileged to meet, why well, he's still so much in the heart he's of thought, the fans. Yes, of course. But the thing is, I mean, it, it, you, 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 you use the word cynical. Um, there is this saying, isn't there, that you ha if you're going to go, you go at the top. <laughs> you know? Mm. You, you don't go sliding down the other side of the hill and then decide, oh, I've had enough, mm. because you, it's past. If you go and, he, I mean, with him, he was at the top. The five years, or, because he was still making videos, he mm. was still making music while he wasn't on the stage. Mm. And let me tell you one thing, um, because we, this is sort of a more serious hour now, yeah. Yeah? No, but no, it's no. okay. It is also a part of... of, of uh, of, of us, of, uh, it, it's something different on television, and it's, it comes out of our heart. Yes. It's honest and it's authentic. There's two people talking about a man, and we both knew him and we still love him, and that is yes. also what and combines that will go him. Until the day I die. <laughs> and that is also what is part of our friendship. But yes. when, I did, when he was the very last time in front of my camera for Days of Our Lives, and you know that actually. I'm going slightly mad, and you know how important this song was to him, yes. and also then later the video. We thought it's the last video. Mm -hmm. And um, then, Days of Our Lives. Yeah, but I asked him why okay. did he do Days of Our Lives. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. when I saw the video before it was released, he, you know, it was the delivered to video. Garden Lodge. The Days video. Yeah. yeah? And he just looked so sick. Mm. It was the first time, considering I lived in the same house with him, it was the first time I saw him looking sick. Mm. Because it was on film rather than on per mm. person. Mm. And it was purely because of the video that had been created before. Because what was the song? Um, I'm going slightly mad. No, 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 no. What? The song before that that was released, um, uh, it's either... Um, oh, come on, I, I make, it's 32. <sighs> before... The, it, was after the, it was after um, <laughs> Slightly Mad. No, after Slightly Mad, there was only Days of Our Lives. No, there was one video no, in between no, no. where he was a cartoon. No, that was the... I'm going Slightly Mad. No, when, when, he, like, when he was made no, up with no, 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 no. There was physical, and each of the band was a oh, painting. that was the show must go on. Yes, but that was before, and that was that was that was where where uh, uh, th this was the show must go on, 
or no innuendo. 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 Yeah. Right. Here we go. And there was not with animation. Was, yes. Yeah, animation. And he said there is no way on earth I am going to die and people remember me as an animated figure. Okay. Good. And, and it I, would also give him the chance to say goodbye. Yeah. No. Let. I wanted to get to this. Um, Jim Beach called me before the shoot of Days of Our Lives and said, Rudy, you know, Freddy is very, very sick. Uh, we know that I, w I had the image of being a perfectionist and redoing a, a, a shoot, a take again and again. He said, you have mm -hmm. to promise me you cut down your takes yeah. because we don't know if Freddy is going to make it through the shoot. So I had to uh, compromise. Yeah. And for some reason, there was the close-up was the last thing, the master close-up was the last thing I filmed. And uh, as you know, Freddie was always super prepared. He was always on sync. Yeah, yeah he, I, there was no way that he would yes. not uh, uh, catch the line or whatever. So we do this close-up. And it was the last thing of, uh, you know, before, it was a simple performance yeah. video in black and white, as you know. When he had this uh, uh, thing on with the with the, yeah, the cats. With, with the cats, right? Yeah. Pa hand painted. Yes. And I say, oh great, thank you. And because it was the last thing, I said, it's a wrap. And Freddy says, no, 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 no. And he asked me, oh, he says, no, no, I want to do it again. I said, yeah, but it was great. So no, no, let me do it again. So I do this take again. And as you know, in in this song, there is um, a moment where. Um, he, he's, he's saying, in, I still love you. Hmm. And he's like, I still love you. Yeah. And before that, so he, we come to this uh, um, uh, 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 musical point again. And he, what he didn't do in the take before, he starts laughing as if he would laugh about himself. Yeah. Yeah. As if he would say, yes, I'm the great Freddie Mercury, but don't take everything so serious. I'm just a singer of my songs, which is one of his lines anyway. And then he says again, I, I, st I still love you, makes that and walks out of the picture. And I say, oh, great, thank you. Now it's a wrap. I didn't get any of mm -hmm. that. And then at home or yeah, in, the, in the editing suite, I was saying, and please, and you know I can say that, what a clever bastard. Mm -hmm. To the very last moment, he was under control. Yeah. He knew exactly. Mm. And this is just the mosaic to what you just said, that this is going to be the last ever moment he's in front of yeah. a camera. Because he knew that. He knew, he knew and that. he was saying, I still love you to the fans. Yeah. And he was saying, that is it. And he walked out of life. Yes. And when I realized that in my editing, I started to cry. Yeah. But I also started to laugh. Yeah. Because he was under control until the very yes. end. Yes, 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 yes. Who? Uh, uh, quite um, s s tough things that we're discussing yeah. here, but it's um, no. But um, but the thing is, it's the hard things that make. In the end, it's the hard things that give you the chance to smile. If you don't know the sad, you don't know the good. And there are so many, many more good times to remember them bad. Well, what, how do you want Freddie Mercury to be remembered? How do I or how do I think he should be? Whatever you want, darling. Choose what you like. Um, for me, he will be one of the greatest friends I ever had in my life and will remain so, even though he's gone now for 30 years, he will still remain so until the day I die. But for Freddie, I want just people to remember him happy and smiling. People ask me, what's my best memory of Freddie? What's my favorite? What's it? And all I ever say is Freddie laughing. Mm. Because 
that Freddie didn't, there wasn't so much of that scene. I mean, in some of your interviews, yes, you see him throw his head back and laugh, but the hand will come up and all that. Because of the teeth. But, yeah, but at home, he just I laughed. I don't look too bad for 37. <laughs> yeah. I'm just a rock and roll prostitute, my yes. dear. Or... But it was smiling, it yeah. was happy. Yeah. And that's the Freddie I remember. He once also said in, in, in one of my interviews where he said, I just want to get as much fun out of my life in the years I have. Yes. And that was when he was 37. There, there was no way yeah. of AIDS. No, he didn't know. But any, that yeah. was his, his, his motto of living. Yes. I want to get as much fun out of life for me and my friends in the years I have. Yeah. Peter, it's been a wonderful hour again. It's been different. It's been funny, it's been sad. It's been a little bit like Freddie Mercury or living yeah. with Freddie Mercury or working with Freddie Mercury, <laughs> which all had yes. in, in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is, as I'm sure you would agree, it's also was always rewarding to be yeah. around him. No, and definitely. I see it until now as a privilege. He's my mentor. He's, um, I take his advice still today. And I say very, thank you very much for being here no, and for I'm, coming here. I'm very, very happy to have been here. Although you hate me. Oh, yeah, but that goes without saying. Yeah, you hate me and you said to me, I never come into your television show, you know, and, so, and whatever. I had to bribe you with well, millions of show? dollars. Whose show? It's actually your show. Yeah, okay, okay. just... just. So, okay, so it's not... It's not my Sendung mehr, wie Sie sehen, sondern die von Peter Freestone. Das war jetzt ganz was anderes ähm, auf der, und auf der anderen Seite doch äh, tolle Zahl pur und Peter Freestone pur. Ich sage wie immer Dankeschön fürs Zusehen. Ähm, Sie können mir auf den ganzen sozialen Medien folgen. Ähm, auch Peter Freestone ist sehr ähm, sozusagen aktiv in Social, ist very active in Social Media. Well, er hat ein, wund active, not er hat ein wunderbares <lacht> Buch geschrieben, äh, das ich gerne in die Kamera halte, mit den äh, Royal Recipes, 100 Gerichte, die er für Freddie Mercury gemacht hat. Äh, und ich sage Dankeschön fürs Zusehen. Ähm, Freddie Mercury forever. Ja, yeah. no, definitely. Definitely. Alles Liebe, denken Sie an diesen großen Menschen, vielleicht haben wir Sie ein bisschen dazu angeregt und etwas, was dem Freddy immer gefallen hat, war mein Abschied, Love and Respect, weil wenn wir mit Liebe und Respekt den anderen Menschen gegenübertreten, dann sind wir anständige mm -hmm. Menschen und dann kann nicht so I, viel schief gehen. I just want to say to everybody, particularly in the, this day and age, please, please, please take care. That's what you have to do. And smile. It takes a lot less muscles to smile than it does to frown. So, smile. Did I tell you today already that I love you? Two or three times. Okay, that's not enough. I love you. Thank you. Me Dankeschön. Too. Dankeschön. Love and respect.